Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Glory be to God Almighty. We are here another Monday night in our call-in session. Glory be to God Almighty. We are running a few minutes late. Nevertheless, we are here tonight to answer the question that you have about the Bible, things that you do not understand. Please feel free to call us at the number 876-779-7615. That's 876-779-7615. Glory be to God, our 876-217-7042. That's 876-217-7042. Glory be to God, if you're calling from the U.S. or Canada, the number to call is 779-223-2105. That's 779-223-2105. Glory be to God Almighty. We have call-in session on Monday evenings at 7.30 p.m. On Tuesdays, we have ministering at 7.30 p.m. On Thursday, we have Bible study at 7 p.m. Glory be to God Almighty. I think our director gave me the signal that we have a call. Go ahead, caller. Thank you for calling the Voice of God Ministry. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good night. Um, I'm Jana. I'm from Toronto. Wonderful. Good night to you, Sister Tensiana. Go ahead with your question. That's Zechariah 10, verse 2. Okay, so we're moving over in the Bible to Zechariah 10, verse 2. And I want to say thank you so much, Sister Tensiana. You are always calling in in our calling session. I pray that God will pronounce a blessing over your life. Zechariah 10, verse 2. It reads thus, For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. Glory be to God Almighty. Now what this is saying, Sister Tetsiana, this is the first part here that says, for the idols of spoken vanity. Glory be to God Almighty. You see, the children of Israel, what they did, they turned away from the true and living God. They were worshipping idols. Now, all the children of Israel, what they were going after was just vanity and vexation of spirit. They were, weren't under the banner of the true and living God anymore. Now, it says, and the diviners have seen a lie. So, those are the false prophets that are worshipping idols because you have some people, you know, even nowadays, it may not be the wood and the stone that they are bowing down to, but they have other things that uh, be became their idols. And when the Spirit of God depart from them, they would operate as if they are still hearing from God. And in, the, and in that time, they just tell lies. They prophesy. They don't prophesy anymore, but they prophesy. They say, thus said the Lord when God did not speak. Glory be to God Almighty. So that's the diviners have seen lies. So those are the prophets that say, Thus said the Lord when God did not speak. And have told false dream. So they want to be like they're still in the limelight. But the Spirit of God has departed from them. And they too, they know it. But they still want to operate in the sight of people as if they're still connected to the true vine. Now, continuing, they comfort in vain, therefore they went their way as a flock. They tell the people the lie and the people believe it. And they themselves tell the lie and believe the lie. Glory be to God Almighty. They were troubled because there was no shepherd. So when they gone to Heidel, the true and living shepherd, which is God Almighty, is no longer with them. So they have gone astray. And they turn whichever direction they choose without a guide. Because remember that the true and living God is our guide. 
And the Bible is there. His words are there for us to follow. That's the manual for us to follow. So when they turn their backs on God, they are no without a guide. So they are like a ship without a sail. They are like the sea. They are like the wave in the sea. They toss stone through. They have no steady place. They have no abiding city. So whenever they turn their backs on God, then they are lost and under. Please tell me if you understand, Sister Tenziana. Wonderful. Wonderful. Go ahead. Yes. Bring it closer. Yes. I don't understand but when I went to the church there was a table. Uh-huh. Some flowers on it, candles on it. And each time when we walked to church came in, they go around the table that didn't come from a shine bowl. And they wave. Yes. Why? What's the meaning of that? Alright. Uh you mentioned proper church, but you have revival. And if 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 it's a table could you please describe the table that you see because the altar is totally different from having a table because I see these people having tables where they have a lot of candles and they have a lot of, some of them have um, different type of alcoholic beverages like Heineken, Guinness, rum and all of those things but those things are not of God. Those with the, with the alcoholic beverages, those are not of God. Those no, that, that table was just like flowers and the candles. Okay, that's an altar. No, revival churches do have altar. As in the Bible, the altar may, may differ in the Bible because in the Bible they, they usually make it out of stone. But no, they would have the table instead of the stone and they would have the flowers and so forth. The flowers are there to entertain angels. So with those with those that you see the flowers on the table, you may see a basin with water in it. There is nothing wrong with that because the water is used to represent the blood of Jesus Christ. So you may give it to the sick to drink it and they get healing. You may, you know, God may tell you to use the water to anoint somebody or use the water to just pour it out on somebody and they get healing from that. The flowers. They are there to entertain angels. When the, when the angels come in the revival churches, when the angels arrive, you will see somebody that is connected to the vine will normally take up the vase with the, with the flowers in it and they will wave it. That's, that's that kind of salutation. It, it, it means that they are greeting the angel that arrive. Okay. Yes. You will only find that um, in the revival churches though. Only, only revival people do those kind of things. But, and then again, yes, go ahead. In the middle of the service, they stop and they dance and they yes. have the table and they Yes, they greet and, and, and uh, they, they fellowship. No, that is also that is also biblical. Greet your brother with a holy kiss. The brother or the sister. So that is also biblical. You 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 dance with them, that's that's called fellowship. Right? You, you, you are, and even when you see with the smiting of the hand and the stamping of the feet, it is also biblical. Uh -huh. Glory be to God Almighty. Yes, you can check over there in Ezekiel 6, verse 11. So you will see some things. So those things that you see the people doing, they're, they're um, biblical. Uh -huh. But people that do not understand, and because what the revival do, the Popo Mania do things similarly to the revival. So people just put everybody under one umbrella. But there are differences between the revival and the Popo Mania. Okay. Yes. Powerful questions. Powerful questions. Glory be to God Almighty. But it shouldn't be that they have the alcoholic beverage. And I will say that again because a lot of churches do these things. But when they have the alcohol beverage, that's popcorn, and they're entertaining ancestral spirit. No, the only spirit that should be entertaining the house of God is the spirit of God. Anything other than that, it is known as popcorn. And a lot of people they cross the line, and that is why you hear about sixty revival, and you hear about sixty-one. Now the sixty-one is popcorn, but the sixty is revival. Yes. Are you understanding? 
Yes, I do. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for calling my sister. Thank you so, so much and do have for yourself a wonderful evening. Welcome. Wonderful. Oh yes. So, great questions are coming in already. Glory be to God Almighty. Great questions are coming in. You see, at the end of the day, a lot of people do not understand the difference between revivalism and pokomania but there is a big difference between both because the pokomania that is of the devil that deals with, deals with ancestral spirit you hear about the african the african order or the indian order and all of those things any order should be the order of god not the african not the indian glory be to god almighty so those things are not of god because they're not biblical and I'll tell the people of God, this voice of God ministry is here to clear some things up. Because the only thing that we deal with it is the spirit of God Almighty. We don't deal with any other kind of spirit. So no ancestral spirit, no spirit from Africa. Spirit from Africa must remain in Africa. Spirit from India remain in India. But we need the spirit of God from above to come down and to dwell with us. Glory be to God Almighty. Powerful, powerful question from our dear sister Tensiana. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, I think we have another call. Glory be to God. Oh, that's a false signal. Okay. So, people of God, I want us to understand that the Bible is here to guide us. And whatever is not written in the Bible, please refrain from doing those things. Uh, they had a phone to get us. It's in the back. Glory be to God Almighty. So please refrain from doing those kind of stuff. Because whatever is not biblical, when you do those things, it will cause it to go straight into the lake of fire. It's not a if, nor but, nor maybe. But it will cause you to go straight into the lake of fire. Glory be to God Almighty. You see, this evening we were late. We started out late because we had to rush coming in from work and all of those and, you know, rush to get things done. Glory be to God Almighty. Some things are still undone. But we are here nevertheless to answer your questions. The number is again to call 779 Seven six one five. That's eight seven six seven seven nine seven six one five. My director, please pay attention to the mobiles behind you. Eight seven six seven seven nine seven six one five or eight seven six two one seven seven zero four two. Glory be to God Almighty. You see, people of God, we need clarity on certain things. Because, you see, this question, these questions, rather, that Sister Tetsian has just asked. Glory be to God. My director said that we have another call. Uh, thank you for calling the Vice of God Ministry. Please go ahead and tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good evening. I am Mr. Lloyd. Calling Good evening to you, Mr. Lloyd. Please go ahead with your question, sir. Okay, so we're going to Numbers chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. Glory be to God. So it reads us, Numbers chapter 11, verses 12 and 13. It reads us, 12. I have conceived, I have, I con have I conceived all this people? That's a question. Have I conceived all these people, meaning have I given birth to all these people? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the sucking child, and unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? 12. When should I have flesh to give unto all these people? For there for they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. 
Glory be to God Almighty. So this was a point in time when the children of Israel were crying out to Moses that they want me to eat. They no longer want any manna because they're no sick and tired of the manna, so they wanted manna to eat. Glory be to God. So Moses was consulting God, but he was asking the question, have I conceived all these people? Meaning, are these people my children? Have I begotten them that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father bear the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest unto their fathers? So the bird was on Moses. So Moses was saying to God, Lord God Almighty, am I their father? Why have you given me these people to carry into the land which you have promised unto them? In other words, 13 again, whence should I have flesh to give unto them, to all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we may eat. In other words, where am I going to get meat to give to them? Where am I going to get meat? No, they do not want any more manna. They want meat to eat. But where am I going to get the meat? No, the children of Israel were like the sand of the sea. They were a great multitude. And you can just imagine God give you a great multitude to lead. And then all the people come together saying to you now, give us meat. We don't want any more manna that falls from heaven, but give us meat that we may eat. What would your answer be? So Moses was frustrated. So he was consulting God and asking God question. In this manner, I would say this kind of question is, is somewhat forward. Glory be to God Almighty. But Moses was stressed because of the disobedience of the people and because of the stiff-necked people that he was leading. Glory be to God. Let me know if you understand, Mr. Lloyd. Yes, sir, I do. Uh, can I ask another question, please? Sure, go ahead. Feel free. Can you explain uh, Leviticus 22 and verse 3 for me, please? All right, so we are going over to Leviticus chapter 22 and the third verse, Leviticus 22, verse 3. It reads thus, Say unto them, Whosoever ye be of all your seed among your generation that goeth unto the holy thing which the children of Israel hallowed unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. Glory be to God Almighty. So now this was God speaking to Moses, handing down some laws to Moses. Glory be to God Almighty. So in this case, and I'm going to read it again. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seeds among your generation that goeth unto the holy things, which the children of Israel hallow unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off from my presence. I am the Lord. So therefore they could not go to the tabernacle, the, the females could not go to the tabernacle while they were menstruating. They could not go to the tabernacle while they were seeing their period. Glory be to God Almighty. At that point in time, they are, they are unclean, so they should stay away from the tabernacle. So right here, God was handed down, handing down some laws to Moses to govern the people, telling them, Tell the people, the ladies, if you are menstruating, do not come anywhere near to the, 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 the tabernacle or anything that comes from the altar that is holy. Don't touch it. Glory be to God Almighty. So even nowadays, some churches would have it that if, you're, if the female is menstruating, they should not be present in the house of God. But Jesus differs when he came. Glory be to God Almighty. Because if you are not able to go into the sanctuary now, if you are on your period and not able to go into the sanctuary, what if judgment come? Are you not able to go to heaven because you are on your period? No. So Jesus differs. It is okay for you now to go to the sanctuary whether you are on your menstruation or not. But 
You cannot drop the fasting if you're menstruating and you cannot take the Holy Communion if you're menstruating. Please let me know if you understand, Brother Lion. Yes, sir, I do, I do, I do. Thank you very much for your clarification. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for calling the Vice of God Ministry. Do have for yourself a wonderful evening. Thank you for having me. Bless you. Oh, yes, people of God. So, you see, at the end of the day, some things like those, God was passing down the law. And if you realize that coming down, God changed some things because it was okay in the time of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel and Seth, coming down to Abraham. It was okay for you to get married to your brother or your sister. Okay, we have another call. I will catch up on that. Bless the Lord. Thank you for calling the voice of God. Ministry, please go ahead. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Present evening to you, my pastor. Bless you. Uh, I would like you to clarify for me on James 3, verse 8. Okay, so we are now moving over to James 3, verse 8. And my director, I'm going to ask you please to remind me about Leviticus 22, verse 3. So James 3. You said James 3, verse 8. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. James chapter 3, verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, so this book of James, James 3, it is talking about controlling your members. Controlling your body. Controlling the things that you do. Now, when it comes down to the tongue, people of God, when it comes down to the tongue, the same tongue that bless you, the same tongue will curse you. The same tongue that says yes, that very same tongue will end up saying no. So, James was saying, you can tame a lion. In my words, you can tame a lion. You can, you can tame the wildness of animals. But you can never tame the tongue. The tongue talk what it feels like. When it feels like. Glory be to God Almighty. And that is why David said, I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. Psalms 39 verse 1. So you see, this tongue that you have, it is a very unruly thing. It is very hard to control. And I always say to the people that God put a tongue behind 32 grill bars. Those are your teeth. You see how tough the teeth are. The, the, the teeth are glory be to God Almighty. And God put the tongue behind the teeth because the tongue is so unruly. I'm just putting it in my little own words for you to understand. Glory be to God Almighty. This tongue, it is what is going to cause a lot of people to go to hell. Because the same mouth that they bless with is the same mouth that they curse with. And sweet and bitter water cannot come forth from the same fountain. Glory be to God Almighty. Paul said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Glory be to God Almighty. You see, anything other than that, sin is going to come forth from it. Please let me know if you understand. Yes, I do. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. I will work the work of him that sent me while it is day because I do know that the night is very near when no man can work. God bless you and thank you so much for calling. Wonderful. This tongue, it is an unruly member. You see, it is not the things that we eat. Jesus said, it is not the things that we eat that will defile our body. But it is the things that we speak out of our mouth. Because what the heart gathereth, the mouth speak. So it is the things that we gather, you know, when it says the heart, it is not that because I touch my chest. The Bible is not referring to this four chamber organ in your stomach. In the thoracic cavity. It is talking about your mind. Because just like all this four chamber are going to have to keep pumping for the blood to circulate and to keep you alive, to keep the body going, supplied with oxygen. So it is with the mind. 
The, 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 the mind, it controls the body. Things do enter the mind and then it comes in action. We have another call. Please go ahead, tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good night to you, Brother Andre. Go ahead with your question. Who sent Jesus on the earth? Glory be to God Almighty. Now, that's a good question. Good question. Now, it is God Almighty that sent Jesus on earth. God sent Jesus on earth. Now, there is no difference between God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. So it was God himself in heaven and then God just split himself in two and sent a part of him on earth while he was still in heaven. So it is God that sent Jesus here on earth. And that is why Jesus said, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day for the night coming when no man can work. So God sent Jesus here on earth, my son. Please let me know if you understand. It is very low. I did not hear you. Go ahead again. Are you understanding? Yes, I, yes, I do. Wonderful. Okay, so we have another call. Go ahead, caller. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. This is Tamar. Good night. Good night to you, Sister Tamar. Please go ahead with your question. Yes, sir. Um, how should we regard people who claim to work miracles? I just speak in tongues today. Alright, people who claim to work miracles and who speak in false tongues. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. It says, Any man that comes to you with any other doctrine different from that which you have learned, you should mark such a man and avoid him. So if such a person have false spirit, and such a person take it upon him or herself to manifest under that false pretense. So they prophesy. They speak in false tongues. Tongues of the devil. Those people you should stay away from them because one man up will spoil the whole bunch. And if you're not steady, if you're not sturdy in God, that manipulated spirit that have them doing things which is not of God, it may catch you. So as Paul says, anyone come with anything different from that which you have learned, mark him and abide him. If it is, if it is, if it is even an angel that come to you telling you something different from that which is in the Bible, let that angel be a curse. Mark such a person, my sister, and avoid such a person. What you have to do is just pray for that person. Please let me know if you understand. Okay, my director said we lost her. Glory be to God Almighty. No, that's a very good question that the sister came with. Glory be to God. If somebody is under false pretense, false pretense, you have to mark such a person and avoid such a person. Because you see, the children of disobedient. They will cause you to be caught up with them if you tarry with them. I think we have another call. Please go ahead, call and tell us your name and where you're calling from. Hello, good night. Um, my name is Richard Collins from Phase 3. Go ahead with your question, my brother. Um, what I would like to know. The King Nebuchadnezzar that the Bible um, talks about in the book of Daniel, we yeah. have mentioned about um, thinking that so Kazakhmishik and Appendigo the furnace. And I just want to know if it's, if it's the same thing that reigns for the whole um, book of Daniel or is there a different, different thing you recognize? Okay. Is the name all the things you recognize? Okay, that's a good question. Very, very good question. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar was ruling in the time of Ananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known as Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But after King Nebuchadnezzar 
King, King Nebuchadnezzar died in, in chapter 4. He was out in chapter 4. Now, chapter 5 was about King Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar. And after Belshazzar, then King Darius. King Darius was reigning at the time when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son, he didn't reign for long because he took out the vessels from the house of God and he made a big feast and caused his, he, 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 he caused his, his um, great men and, and his countermines to drink forth and there came a writing on the wall, glory be to God Almighty. Many, many taken, you first. So what it, it, it interprets is that you have been weighed in the balance and found wanting. And the same night he was slain by his own people. And that's when King Darius took over. So Nebuchadnezzar was from Daniel chapter 1 to chapter 4. But Belshazzar took over at chapter 5. And Darius took over at chapter 6. But it was just the one Nebuchadnezzar from verse um, chapter 1 to chapter 4. And that's the same Nebuchadnezzar that God sent out in the field until seven times pass over. Because he was too high minded. That's the father of Belshazzar. Yes. Powerful question. Powerful, powerful question. If you have any more questions, please feel free, my brother. Um, okay. Thank you so much for calling and God bless you. Thank you so much for your question. Glory be to God Almighty. Powerful, powerful question. Powerful, powerful question. So, the the king of the king Nebuchadnezzar, glory be to God Almighty, he was there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and when it came on to the time where he picked up his chest and he had to be kicked out, after that, after he passed, then. His son Belshazzar started to reign. But his son did not take heed to what happened to the father. Because God kicked the father off the throne and put him out there to eat grass with the oxen. And the Bible said that his ears begin to grow. The hair on his body begin to grow like bird feather. And his nails begin to grow like bird claws. And he was out there eating grass until seven times passed over. Now, when he realized that he was wrong, he repented and he asked God to pardon him. And God restored him to the throne. The Bible said that an excellent majesty was added unto him. So God restored him to the throne. And after he reigned, he reigned some years after he was restored to the throne and then he passed. And then his son now, Belshazzar, did not learn from the father's mistake. Because the father big up his chest and God had to thrust him out. Until he understood himself, then God reinstated him. But what the son did, the son, the things that they took away from Jerusalem when they went and they took the children of Israel from Judah and Jerusalem. The son said, all right, go for those vessels and we're going to drink from them and we're going to make ourselves merry. But that was his, was his biggest mistake. So when they could not... When, when they were there drinking and the hand came writing on the wall and they did not understand, it was only Daniel himself that could have interpreted. So Daniel came and Daniel told him that you did not learn from the father's mistake and you come now making the same mistake. And he was saying to Daniel, if you could write, read the, the writing that is on the wall, if you could interpret the writing that is on the wall, I will make it a third rule and the kingdom, I will put a gold chain about it and I will promote it. But that is a keep a promotion and keep your, your gold and your gold chain that you have and all of that. But that is still gave him the interpretation. And the interpretation thereof was that you have been weighed in the balance and you have found wanting. And the kingdom is now torn away from you and given to the needs and the Chaldeans. So you see, at the end of the day, he lost it. And they slew him that very night. And then King Darius took over. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, before we are out of time, but before I go, 
I want to jump back to Leviticus. Was it Leviticus 22 that we were at? Glory be to God Almighty. Now, I want to jump back to Leviticus 22. So, at the end of the day, the man of God was under immense pressure. And we know that pressure was spiked in Jamaican terms. Pressure was spiked. So when Moses was under immense pressure, glory be to God Almighty, he was asking the Lord some questions. But the thing about it is, when God gives you a command, no matter the pressure that you undergo, try to stand up on your feet and do what the Lord says. Don't ever forget the sight of the fact that God gave you that command and God is standing by you because the thing that I am sure of is that the will of God will never take you where his grace cannot protect you so we know that God, you rest assured rather that God is standing by you and no matter how hot the battle gets stand your ground no matter how hot it gets stand your ground because if, we, if you stand your ground at the end of the day, you, you will hear well done. But if you begin to differ, if you begin to draw aside, if you begin to get weary and start doing your own thing, then you're going to be in trouble with God Almighty. Now remember, God told Moses to speak to the rock. And because of the, the anger, Moses struck the rock. And it caused him to sin against God. Before we go, I'm going to repeat the numbers another time. The number to call us 876 779 7615 or 876 217 7042. Glory be to God Almighty. So let me tell you something, people of God. The heart of the, the, heart of the battle, the sweet of the victory. Just keep the faith. A lot of time I hear people say I feel like throwing the towel. But at the end of the day, if you're going to give up on God, where are you going to? Think about it. If you're going to give up on God, it simply means that you're going to beg the devil pardon and you're going to go back to the devil's territory. And it makes no sense. Because if you beg the devil pardon and go back to the devil's territory, I think we have another call. I can just get the signal from the director. Thank you for calling the Vice of God Ministry Call. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. Okay, I'm Mr. Light calling again. Okay, Mr. Light, thank you so much for calling again. Go ahead with your question. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you explain Ephesians 2, 13 to 18 for me, please? Alright, so we are going over to Ephesians chapter 2, verses. 14 through to 18. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, reading, for he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances for to make in himself one new man so make him peace and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereby 17 and came and preached peace unto you where of, which were afar off and to them that were nigh. 18 and we'll stop. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, Paul was speaking to the people of Ephesus. So, you see, Paul was telling the people that Jesus Christ came. In my own words, Jesus Christ came that he might unite us, he might bring us together. And let me touch verse 15. I've been abolished in, in the flesh, the enmity, even the law of commandments 
contained in ordinances. Now, look at this. When we jump back to Matthew chapter 5, we will realize that Jesus came not to abolish, but to fulfill. In other words, he came not to change what is, but he came to show you a better way. Now, he said, of them in olden days, they say, if you lay with somebody that is not your married partner, it is a sin. But Jesus came and he said, not only will you lay with them physically, but if you think about laying with them, you have already seen in your heart. Now, Moses said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. So this is where the abolishing came in. Now, if you realize in verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments. And remember, the laws are different from the commandments. The laws of the commandments, what it means there are some rules that are put in place to govern the commandment. For example, if you break the Sabbath, the penalty is dead. Are you following, Brother Lyde? Yes, yes, I yes, so the law that governed the commandment that says, remember to keep the Sabbath day, the law that governed that was, if you break it, you should be put to death. Now, I for an eye and two for a tooth. Moses said, if somebody blind your eye, you just blind back one of the person's eye and then it is, it is done away with. But Jesus came and he said, hear what? If somebody strike you on the left cheek, turn the right. Let peace abide. Walk away from trouble if you can. Don't retaliate. Because you cannot use evil to fight evil. Because if you, if somebody strike you, and then you get fixed and you strike back that person. You're no better than that person that struck you in the first place. So Jesus came and he showed us a better way. So this is what Paul was saying to the Galatians. Because of the coming of Jesus, to the Ephesians rather. Because of the coming of Jesus Christ. A lot of things that used to govern. A lot of, a lot of laws that they used to govern. The commandments. The laws of the commandments were abolished. But not the commandment itself. The laws that govern the commandments. But not the commandments themselves. They, this is where a lot of people get it wrong. Because it said uh, Jesus came and Jesus abolished some of the commandments. No. Jesus did not abolish, uh, abolish any commandment. What Jesus abolished was the laws that govern the commandment. So if you break the Sabbath now. You can go down on your knees and you can pray for it instead of somebody stoning you or, or tying up your face with a rag and put you out in front of the firing squad. Glory be to God Almighty. You know in those days they, they use arrows and so forth, but you know what days they would use the gun. So at the end of the day, if you break the Sabbath, there is no one there to kill you anymore. But you have an enmity, you have an advocate rather with God, so you have to go down on your knees and you have to pray and ask for forgiveness. Please let me know if you understand. Yes, sir. I, I don't. You sound, you sound like you're not sure. You sound like you're not sure. I know, I know. Okay. Um, the, reason, the reason why I ask you to explain this is a lot of people are confusing themselves with the verse 15. Yes. By saying, by saying that the Sabbath is abolished. Not at all. Okay, so that's the reason why. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. So the Sabbath is not abolished. It is just the law that governs that commandment. So if you break the Sabbath, you are no longer going to be put to death. That is what Jesus abolished. The law that governs the commandment, but not the commandment itself. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the clarity. God bless you. Continue to do what you're doing. There is a reward awaiting you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. And indeed, I am running to obtain. Thank you so much for calling, Brother Lai. Bless the Lord. I think we have another caller. Glory be to God Almighty. Okay. So, we have lost that call. Okay, wonderful. So, a lot of people get it wrong. They say that the, the, the commandment was abolished. Okay, we have another caller. Please go ahead. Caller, tell us your name and where you're calling from. Brian from Coringa. 
Okay, Mr. Brian, please go ahead with your question. Um, how, how, should we, what, how should we pray in our mind or out loud? Which, which one is the best way? Okay, wonderful. So, Jesus Christ says when you pray, you should enter into a little enclosed area. So, whether your bedroom, the Bible said closet. But that's an indication to show you that it should be a private area. Because you're, you're about to commune with God. You're about to talk with God. So it's a private area that you go and you commune with your master. So when you pray to God in, 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 in privacy, in secret, then the God that hears it in secret, he will reward you openly. And you can also pray in your mind, as you would say. You can whisper a prayer in your mind because you should always be in tune with God. So you can always whisper a prayer in your mind. But ensure that when you're praying, you're not praying a loud prayer for others to hear you and to hear you for your much speaking. And to say, oh, but Brother Brian can pray, man. No, you just need to go into your own little corner and pray to God in secret. When he hear it in secret, he will reward you openly. Please let me know if you understand. Okay, we have lost him in the last part there. But I do hope Brother Brian have heard what we what we said. Glory be to God Almighty. My director, please try and, and get him back. Glory be to God. So, people of God, the Bible tells us how to operate. We have another call. Please go ahead, call and tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good night to you. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. My name is Sister Angela and I am calling from Macon. Okay, Sister Angela, please go ahead with your question. Could you explain for me St. John 10, verse 1? Okay, so we're jumping over now to St. John chapter 10, verse 1. St. John chapter 10, verse 1. Okay. It reads us. Verily, verily, I say unto you, which means truly, truly. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Glory be to God Almighty. Now, this is a wonderful question. Glory be to God Almighty. Now look at this. Just as Sister Tensia had called us earlier. And she was mentioning some things with the false spirit and all of that. Now look at this. If a man is not of God, and I think Sister Tamara called with something similar to that. If a man is not of God, and yet that man is going to prophesy. I don't even call it prophesy. I call it prophet lie. So that man is going to operate as if he's still connected to the vine. Or he is connected to the vine and he's going to tell you, thus said the Lord when the Lord did not speak. That is a man that climbed through the wind and come into the sheepfold. That is a thief. That is a robber. That is a liar. Glory be to God Almighty. Unless you are connected to the true vine, keep yourself quiet. So now, Sister Angela, Jesus was speaking right here in John 10 verse 1. Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. You have some people, they try to seek other spirit, but they, because they cannot wait upon God to bring them to places, they do not humble themselves in the presence of Almighty God. They do not depend on God to bring them where they want to go. They want to be and an, an, an the, 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 the fast lane, the fast going. And they don't want to clean up themselves so the Spirit of God can come and dwell in them. So you know what they do? They take on fallen angel. They take on the spirits of the devil. Glory be to God Almighty. And then they act as if it is the Spirit of God that is using them. But I hear 1 John chapter 4 verse 1 say you must try this spirit. Because not every spirit is of God. Many false prophets have gone out into the world. Please let me know if you understand, sister. Yes, Sister Angela. Yes, 
Wonderful, wonderful. Glory be to God Almighty. There is most, there, there, there is most something different with this tonight. These questions, you know, they, they come in different manner, but they mean the same thing. And it is about three or four persons that call, and it, 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 it boils down to the same thing. People of God, people need to check themselves. And if God do not say, don't talk your lie and say, thus said the Lord. We have another call. Please go ahead, call and tell us your name and where you're going from. Okay, please go ahead. How many books did Paul write in the Bible? Glory be to God Almighty. Now, Paul wrote a number of books. I'm going to, I'm going to skip over to the New Testament and to run down with you real quickly the books that, that Paul have, have written. Now, it, it starts from the book of Romans. So he wrote Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, he wrote Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews. And that's where he stopped. Glory be to God Almighty. So, those are the books that Paul wrote in the, in the New Testament. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I have right here in the New Testament. So Paul has written the most book. It's the first time that I ever actually count them. But I know that Paul has written the most book in the New Testament. So we got 14 tonight when we did the count. Very good question. Yes, sir. I have another question. Go ahead. We did not get the name of Moses' wife. I don't know the name of Moses' wife. I know that he got married to, a, to an Ethiopian woman, but I do not know the name of the woman. The Bible said he got married to an Ethiopian, but I've never seen it in the Bible where the Ethiopian woman was named. I've never seen it. Not saying that it is not there, but I have never seen it. <coughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for calling the voice of God ministry. God bless you. Glory be to God Almighty. Oh yes, so we are out of time. Do we have another call? Okay. So, glory be to God. Somebody just called and we lost the call. Glory be to God Almighty. So, I want to tell you people of God that you have some powerful questions coming in. And if we really sit down and look into these things, we will realize that, you know, there are a lot of things for many people to catch up on. Because I've seen where people pull away from me because I talk about the Sabbath and said that the Sabbath should still be kept. The Sabbath is not abolished. And, you know, there was a, there was a, a lady that used to be a part of Bible study when she, she said that she read it in the... New Testament that the Sabbath was abolished. So I was saying to her, if you can show me in the New Testament where it was abolished, I will pack up Bible study. But even now, she cannot tell me. We have another call. Please go ahead, call and tell us your name and where you're calling from. Good night again, Mr. Dallas. Good night to you. I'm Tamar. Okay. Tamar. Yes, wonderful, yes. sis. Yes, sir. Um, go ahead. Can I explain to me um, in Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20? Okay. There's not a single person in all the earth who is always good and never sing. Yes. Alright, so I'm going to... How can we keep the commandment then? Is the Bible stating that there's not a single person on this earth that do it good? Alright, could you please run it by me? You said Ecclesiastes... Ecclesi you said Ecclesiastes was 7 verse 20. Yes, sir. Okay, for there is not a just man upon upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Glory be to God Almighty. Now you have asked a very powerful question. Now look at this. 
all have sinned and come short of the glory of God Almighty. If if you should if you should read Romans chapter twenty three, chapter three, rather verse twenty three, glory be to God Almighty. You will realize where Romans three verse twenty three for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you read chapter ten, chapter ten of Romans twenty three, you will Romans three. I keep saying 23. Romans 3, you will see where it says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Now, all of us, let me tell you something. You see, from Adam and Eve's sin, we are fallen from grace. So sin followed the line coming down. And that is why Jesus had to come and die for our sins while we were yet sinners. So Jesus Christ came and he died that we may live. He died that we may have access to eternal life. Because remember, in time past, they had to use even the, the barber dove and, and all of those things to burn and make sacrifice for forgiveness of sins. But when Jesus came and he died, his blood is sufficient to cover every sin that you have ever committed. So at the end of the day, because of the blood of Jesus, then you and I are now able, when we sin, to just go down our, on our knees and pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ and we get forgiveness. Now I heard you ask the question, how can we go to heaven if all have sinned? Now look at this. God didn't call you as a righteous person, but he called you unto perfection. He didn't call you as a perfect person rather, but he called you unto perfection. And he said, be ye holy for I am your father, I am holy. So, at the end of the day, my sister, you have to do your best. There is no man that is good, of course. Even at one point when they were talking to Jesus and they said, good master, he said, why call this me good? Only one is good and he is the father which is in heaven. So at the end of the day, if you don't get yourself confused and to say, okay, the Bible says that we are all sinners and how if we sin, we're going to go to heaven. Hear what? Here, what should be the main focus? Try to read the Bible, understand what you read, and follow it. And that is enough to get you through the pearly gate. That is enough to get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So follow what is given unto you, and you shall be nicely saved. Please let me know if you understand, my sister. Yes, my sister. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome. If you have any more questions, I will feel elated. To answer you. Okay, sir. Okay. Wonderful. So you have no more questions. Please enjoy the rest of your evening and thank you so much for calling. Glory be to God Almighty. So I think that is the final call. We are way over time. Glory be to God Almighty. But I want to tell you, people of God, focus on the Bible. Live according to how the Bible tells you to live. And you will hear well done at the end of your journey. Glory be to God Almighty. God bless you tonight. God keep you tonight. And do remember to share these videos. Go over there on the YouTube platform and type in the voice of God ministry. And you will see Papo. Go ahead and watch all the videos. Like them. Share them with your friends. Glory be to God. We have some that we do. Meals and wheels. We go out on the road. And we give the meals to the to the homeless and the insane out there on the road. You can find all of those videos on the Voice of God Ministry. Just type it in the Voice of God Ministry on YouTube and you will see it comes up. Glory be to God. Please subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Facebook. Like, share with your friend and feel free to leave a comment. I am yours truly, Pastor Dallas. And do remember that I love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you.